forgot to record. Yeah. Okay. So you more or less have to pay a fee to uh, make use of those uh, images. You know, some some can be ranging from twenty dollars to as much as you know five thousand to ten thousand. So Unsplash helps designers solve that problem by giving you access to free images, free high quality images, which you can actually bring into your designs. So there's a plugin for Figma. So you don't really need to leave Figma to get the images. You can just, you know, pick the, click on the plugin and then import the image into whatever frame you are or whichever rectangle or custom shape you are working on. So it's, it's a very, very nice resource. They have, I think, almost 1.9 million images now. So it's a very wide array of images. So another is Pixabay for images as well. So Pixabay is lovely, very, very lovely. It's also the same. You know, and Pixabay goes as far as giving you like illustrations, vectors, and even videos. And now some you know, free music, uh, you know, to, to bring into your projects as well. So Pixabay is also second favorite of mine. So uh, Unsplash has a page dedicated to products. So a lot of the time you would uh, be designing for particular products. Okay. So here now, so everything is included in the classroom. So you can always have access to them. So here you, you can see different kinds of product images because it's, it's difficult for you to more or less you know, create or make these images. Just. So you can use Unsplash resource for product images to more or less get you know, these high quality you know, shots of products that you may want to design for. Uh, okay, we have another, Okay, this is another image resource, Pexels. I think Pexels has uh, a plugin for Figma. I'm not sure. And Pexels should have one for Figma. And Pexels is also the same process, just with high quality images. Some of them require you to uh, attribute back to the owner of the images, but since you are still learning, you are still doing your own personal projects, there's no you know, there's no license attached to many of these things. It's maybe when you are going live on the real world project, you know, whoever you are doing the project for will have to pay for those licenses for you know, those particular images. So uh, another resource is Diverse UI. So I use Diverse UI to get uh, avatars, uh, user icons or user images. Uh, Figma has fixed that problem, but when I use XD most times today, I think there's even a plugin in XD called UI Faces or something, or oh, this person does not exist. I think those are two, two plugins in XD. Okay. But Diverse UI constantly updates their database with images, and there are thousands, thousands of faces here. So <laughs> you can you just keep going. The list is endless. You can actually select and download everything they have in their database you know, as, uh, and then you can toggle this to pick the size of the image you want. Okay, so if you want the highest quality of the picture, you pick that and then you can pick if you are going for females or males and you know, it will sort that for you as well. So it's a very, very nice resource for getting you know, user avatars. Okay, by far one of the best tools I've used in recent time is Remove BG. Okay, so uh, you know you get an image, but uh, you uh, you want to remove the background. Okay, you will have to take that into Photoshop. You will have to start cutting out using the pen tool and adjusting and doing so many other things. Okay, this website does it for you. You know, with the blink of an eye. Okay. So it's it's lovely. Okay, let me let me let me see if I can even give you an example. Uh, you know, I can just go to uh, maybe Google Images and then pick pick an image. Let me say, okay, don't mind my love, Lana. 
So in the first I pick the image of R, for example, and then I I can more or less copy the image address. I can come into remove BG, paste in again. Okay. Sorry, the image is still loading. Okay, thanks. So copy image address and then I can paste it in. And you know, in a matter of seconds, it would pick out the background of you know why is it acting up now? Okay. So just like that, okay. So it's it's a really, really lovely tool because you would work with a lot of images which require you to maybe have transparent layers and the likes. So instead of going through the stress of always having to use Photoshop. There are particular things you would want to use Photoshop for definitely because here now it, it it's nice, but it didn't do a completely perfect job here within the hair. Uh, I can still see some you know red within this section, you know, but you know, for that great work worked well for you. So it saves you time. Okay. So just check it out. It's a very nice tool. Very, very nice tool. So uh, Another resource I use a lot is uh, Eva Design, Eva Design System. Eva Design System is a, a color generator, a, like an AI color generator sort of. So uh, in most cases, when you are designing, or maybe down the line, if you decide to go into a development, you discover that you, you tend to have particular color classes for particular things you would do within you know that project so you would have your primary you have your success you have your info your warning and maybe your danger these are more or less named after i think bootstrap classes okay so you can define your primary colors you know your secondary colors and every other accent colors that you need so more or less you can have your primary then success as maybe your secondary you know, and you can have you know, tertiary for danger, tertiary for warning, and tertiary for maybe other info. So once you have those colors, all you do is you key in their hex code, okay, and then this sort of generates the hues and the tints, the sorry, tints and shades for you, okay. So I, I can pick one of my favorite colors and you know just place that in. It's one FF seven zero seven. And then automatically generates this for me. So 500 is the base, that is the color itself. So everything upwards are tints of that color, and everything downwards are shades of that color. And so you don't necessarily have to stress yourself much about you know how you would get those shades or get them. okay. So uh, you know, so it's more like uh, like I think I saw Abib's design on the group. So if we go with Abib's purple, I don't know it's purple, but somewhere, somewhere around this range. Okay. So when I said in the chromatic scheme now, this is his main color. So he will more or less be going upwards. So those places where he more or less uh, light, he could have used any of the 200 or the 100 value and the design would turn out wonderful because more or less in okay. yeah. So this does a lot for you because uh, to a very large extent, all the colors here follow uh, WCAG standards. So that's the usability standards. So you know when when it generates for you, it generates based on that. But the next two covers that much more. For, for you. So this is the next two, uh, palettes.app. Okay, so uh, maybe, maybe I should just refresh. Let me just refresh this. Okay. So, uh, so palette.app is, okay, let me take this. Yes. Okay. So it generates, you, you more or less already have a generated color palette for you by the but you have the sliders to help you uh, tweak it to what you want. So looking at this closely, we know this is already a monochromatic scheme because it just follows the same color. So it's just 
a tinted version of the next one up until here. So, but the beautiful thing about Palette app is when I click on this, on the right hand side, it gives me uh, contrast ratios for the color. So it shows me how well it plays with white and how, you know, how well it plays with black. And it gives me the score. So this is your WC, meaning that uh, for small white text, this passes. So that will be text of a minimum of you know, two rems or 16 pixels, okay, or 16 points in Figma, for example. And then for small white text, it also passes the triple A standard. So which means you can always use small white text on this first color, okay. The same thing applies. So for large text and uh, for you know large white text, it passes. Okay, so it will tell you what color of contrast works well with this. So if I move on to the next color, you see it shows me the same. Then I move on to the next. It now tells me, okay, it doesn't pass the triple A. But if you pass the double A, you are more than okay. okay so you are, you are virtually more than okay. And this color plays well with both white and black you know, text or any other type of element that is colored white or black you know, placed on top of it. You know, so it shows me the same for this, but this is only black and as expected, this is only black as well. You know. So this, this will more or less inform you of more about you know, what kind of text plays well with that color you have chosen. So sometimes I like to pair this with colors. So I, I would go into colors, I would get my the particular uh, you know, uh, color palette I like or generate one there then come back here and see how well it plays with the standards. But I think colors has already included uh, the WCAG standards into their color generator. I'm not sure, you know, but I think they've included that. So, But this is a very, very nice tool for you to check that as well you know, before you, you move ahead. So this is the is a, <laughs> it's a very voluminous website, but this is where the WCAG, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines are covered. You know, so this is where they explain more about you know, the guidelines and you know, how to design for accessibility. For now, since you are designing for yourself, you don't necessarily need to, okay? You can still go crazy and you know, do, colors and all of those stuff. But uh, when you start designing actual products for people that you know people are under, going to undergo development, people actually use, it's advisable to work with this. And I think Abib made a statement. He said, uh, uh, what if you have colors that are already assigned to you? Well, <laughs> in most cases, you are not in control, okay? Especially when you are working for a client. Most times they already have uh, they already have their own colors, okay, and they already believe in their own colors. So it will be more or less you now trying to make it work. So it so uh, it will revolve around you now playing with that actual color, but using maybe shades or tints. So which is where that monochromatic scheme comes in to help you. Okay, so that that way it's not very off-putting because you see some you know some brands that you know, give you a red and a green and then you have to make it work so and it's not just maybe a lighter shade of green it's like full-blown green and full-blown red and you have to make it work so you know, it's one of those things okay so this is another resource the website that you know uh, lists out top brands in the world and they are color palettes, okay? So uh, if I say Apple, for example, and I search for Apple, it would uh, it will return results on Apple's color codes. Okay, I think it's still loading. Yeah, it's always bad when it rains. So it, it will more or less return the color codes for uh, Apple. Okay, okay, oh, has a lot of results. Okay, let me, let me try, let me try a different brand. Okay, <laughs> let me try a different brand. But it, it just gives you their, okay, let me see Airbnb, yes. So it just gives you their 
their hex values or their RGB values or the CMYK color codes that they actually used in their uh, brand identity. So this is Airbnb's color. So it gives me the Pantone color, it gives me the hex color, it gives me the RGB color, the same way. So in case you, in, you, are, you are looking for that, you know, because some, some clients come to you and tell you, I want the exact uh, Airbnb color, I want the exact uh, Apple color. Okay, so you, you can use this to get those colors without having to get the logo or something and sample from it and it's not the actual color you know, at the end of the day. So another resource is uh, icons, okay? So I love uh, flat icons. So flat icons, by far my best resource for icons. They have, oh God, so 3.6, million plus icons. Wow, that's a lot. I didn't even know it was that much. I come in here, but I didn't even look at the numbers. No, but they have a lot. A lot of icons that you, you can use in your projects. One thing to just keep in mind is to always ensure that your icons are consistent. At, at the early stages of me using icons, I was, you know, I would choose maybe a stroke icon and pair it with a field icon. If you are using a field icon, go field all the way. If you are using a stroked icon, go stroked all the way. You know, so the, the user is at ease. So another personal favorite of mine is Feather, Feather icons. The, the uh, uh, gallery of icons are small, they are not that much. I think they are, they are less than, I think they are less than a thousand, okay, but they are lovely. They update them once in a while, okay? They update them once in a while, but I like Feather maybe because I like, uh, I like stroked icons, okay? I don't know why, I just I prefer stroked icons to field icons, but uh, I love Feather a lot because of how simple and uniform the icons are. So every icon is uniform. Every icon has equal width, equal strokes and the like. So it's, it's one of the reasons why I love Feather. Feather is included in the Figma. You can find the plugin in Figma. And I think even flat icons plugin is in Figma. So the next resource is uh, Andra. Okay, so uh, Andra is an open source uh, illustration website. So you are looking to bring in uh, illustrations into your design. You can always get them from Andra and they are free. They are completely free to use. I think Echo Bank even uses Andra illustrations in their, in their new app or something. Oh, are they have a, a, okay, they have a, wow. So, uh, sorry, I got carried away there. So, uh, uh, Andra is basically, it's, you know, you, you, you can't make illustrations. Even me, I can't make illustrations. I'm trying to go into illustrations now. You know, I'm finding that, okay, a lot of guys are now using more of Andra and more of these free resources. So, I think I'll just go and learn illustrations so I can have my own custom illustrations. So, uh, no, but that's what it is. It's straightforward. And the beautiful thing about Andre is, or oh, maybe you already have uh, a color scheme you're working with. You can come to this color picker and then you can put in that color code and it immediately updates everything to match that color you are working with. You know? So it's very, very, very nice. And it gives you uh, SVG options and PNG options. So always go with the SVG options. I think Andre is already on Figma, I'm not sure. I know it's on XD. Okay, but, uh, it's a very, very lovely resource. So the next set of resources are uh, inspiration. Okay, so uh, sites you can go to to get inspiration. Okay, uh, we have uh, Site Inspire. So Site Inspire does hand created stuff. So a lot of the stuff here has been gone through, and I think in most cases, there are websites that are actually live, okay? So it's a very, very lovely place to find some kind of nice inspiration from, okay? Because as designers, you, you need that. You need to constantly get this fresh inflow of you know, ideas. So you can always come to these kinds of sites to, oh, my intelligence too. You can always come to this kind of site to get you know, this uh, inspiration from. 
So another one is awards, okay? Awards is by far one of the biggest for websites. So awards, they, they, they update this daily. They have sites of the day, every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there are a lot of wonderful, wonderful. You can spend hours on awards, okay? You can actually spend hours on awards and you won't even feel it because their curation is lovely, it's wonderful. So they just compile different types of sites and every day they get awards. So you, you, you can sort through the winners and the nominees and you can even go dig deep and pick a category. So like these are previous winners of site of the day. So uh, this site, one site of the day. Uh, so this what fourth, so that was two days ago. So you can always, you know, visit the site and see, you know, things that, you know, were done on that site, you know, and you can always integrate that into your design, okay? And Picasso says, uh, a, a good artist copies a great artist steals. <laughs> I'm not saying you should steal all the time, but, uh, you know, this, you know, it's more about looking at what others are doing, you know, and finding out if, that works within your own workflow, okay? So for me, I love minimal design, so I tend to look for more minimal designs to see, okay, oh, am I still, there are just some things I'm you know, doing too much, okay? Am I doing too much of white space, you know, for the sake of making my design minimal? Or are there things I can integrate, you know? So still make it minimal, but as well, you know, offer them some more info as well. So you know, it's, it's what you are, you know, this, your design style is. You would know, look more into. So another inspiration site is uh, One Page Love. Okay, this is wonderful, wonderful website. So it's majorly for uh, one pages. Okay, I think majorly for one pages, and it's just like sites inspired. You, you just come in and you get a lot of inspiration of particular sites. You can also search for particular things, you know, maybe you know, product page or something, you know. Inspiration is always, always very, very, very important. Dribble is also one of them, okay. Uh, yeah, Dribble, Dribble is also one. Dribble is also a very, very nice, you know, place to come in and you know, get. Like I'm signing already, so. So you can always come into Dribble and you can always get some sort of inspiration from Dribble, you know, based on uh, things that are trending and the likes. I'm personally falling off Dribble a little uh, because I feel a lot of things on Dribble are now looking the same. I don't know, you know, but but you can always get inspiration. The idea is you should look at design for from the perspective of the user. Okay, it's very crucial, you know. So. A lot of things I now see on Dribble are not really uh, usable. They are just beautiful, but they are not really usable. <laughs> but because yeah. a lot of the products you use have, have you know, should re you create to relate to how the user would use it. Okay, it's not about just the beauty. So, but you can always get good stuff from Dribble. You know? uh, another resource should be bare hands. Okay, I don't know why I did not include that. But uh, Behance is also another good place to be. Behance is owned by Adobe. So uh, I think I'm preferring Behance because of the way things are created or the way things are posted on Behance. So uh, it's, it's a very, very large collection. So you would have to more or less search for what you're looking for or based on your interest, you will be provided with you know, content. So uh, another resource is, uh, which I think this is my last resource here. So that's uh, Nigerian logos. So I think this was made by uh, Paystack. So a lot of Nigerian fintechs and other companies, you know, have their high quality versions of their logos uploaded here. So they have the SVG and the PNG. So you can always come here to get the high quality versions of those logos. It's not all. Okay, uh, not all are uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so some some are slow to, to the game, but uh, a large majority of them are here. You know. So in the event you don't find it, then uh, you have to resort to the good old Google Images. You know, but if you want the high quality stuff, 
so th this is where you will more or less find the high quality logos of you know top nigerian brands okay so that's it about resources so uh, let's talk about the paths to follow so i just put there follow your heart okay just follow your heart so in the second week we talked about the roles and we've talked about you know, the ux unicorns we talked about uh, the ux designers we talked about uh, content creators we talked about interaction designers or ui designers so the course or the training we've done has more or less covered everything except uh, content strategists okay so <laughs> i don't know anything about that sadly and i don't know anyone who does that if not i would have brought him in to maybe handle one session about content strategy but i don't know that i don't know anyone like that you know but more or less is about you going through everything we've done okay and picking that part that you feel you know you would find most rewarding okay for me i enjoy the entire ux process inclusive of ui design which is why i do virtually everything you know, but for some people it's just the ui design they are after so you would you would follow that part you will go uh, towards uh, you know doing things like uh, Go towards doing things like uh, strengthening your typography, strengthening your uh, color theory, you know, and the likes, you know, strengthening your UI principles and every other thing. You know, for someone who will go into just UX research, you know, or you would more or less just be involved with understanding users, you know, uh, going through the empathy stage and you know, defining problems and testing. Okay, so. It's not something that can be decided for you, okay, <laughs> uh, by me, but it's you that would actually do that yourself, you know. So for some, I know people who are just in UX research and they love it and they're doing really, really well, you know, and I know some who just do UI, they don't know anything about the UX process, of, uh, and user, uh, user experience, they just know how to do good UIs. So it's, it's what you enjoy. If you, you feel you, you want to do the entire thing, fine. Okay. Personally, I do the entire thing and I'm looking to get into development as well. You know, so, but it's, once, once you're comfortable with one, you know, I feel the others would, would just fall into place generally. You know, because I, when I did UX, I was handing over to guys and they were like, okay, they would design. And when they design, it doesn't, you know, it's not reflective of what you know I give them. So that was what propelled me to now say, okay, let me just start doing it. It was initially. Okay. So uh you can start the UX when you're comfortable, you can go into UI, you can do UI when you feel oh, you want to understand why you're making some of these decisions, you can see and if you are comfortable with the design process, you can push forward and you know, go into maybe content. You can push forward and you can go into uh, uh, becoming a unicorn. Okay, so it's generally up to you. Okay, so the third thing we'll be talking about is uh, creating a portfolio. So uh, a lot of the times there's no straightforward way, although in recent times something came up that has been really nice, okay, which is, uh, I think, let me, let me, let me pull that up. Okay, which is this, the, the daily UI challenge. So uh, you are more or less given tasks for 100 days, okay? And then you are to deliver those tasks, except for weekends. So it's Monday to Friday thing, and then you rest Saturday, Sunday, and then the next week you, you start again. So it's for 100 days, and you are given tasks to do every day. So this is one way to build a UI portfolio. Okay, so it's a it's a very very good way to uh, to start out. You know, it's because when people ask you, you say you are a designer, show me something. Okay, you need to be able to show them a portfolio. So a, a good way to start out is with the daily UI challenge because it's straightforward. Most times it's just one screen you are designing. It's just you know one thing. I don't even know where, where am I? I've been really lazy about this thing. 
Okay, I think I'm on okay, I'm on day 67. I've not gotten to it in a while. So it's maybe when I have time and go back, you know. But for you, I'm sure many of you still have still have a lot of time to do this, but just you can sign up for the daily UI challenge and then every day you are given a task and you discover that you know you, you employ things like you know checking out other people's works you, know, you employ things like uh, you know, thinking creatively about you know that process or that like, you know, task you have been given okay i would say uh it depends on how you want to go about it some people want to dwell heavily on it fine uh maybe it's because i've you know, gone a little bit far in the process. I, I understand some of these things, which is why maybe I may be able to do them you know, one, two, or three of them maybe in a day. But uh, in the case of uh, you guys, you can definitely take your time on it. Okay, there's really no need to rush per se. Okay, and I think some someone pointed that out to me some time back because I would I would you know. I would do some quickly and I will just put up for the sake of putting up, you know, but I would say you can take your time on it. Okay. Uh, you have, since they are one day projects, you can definitely spend the entire day or even two on it and ensure that it's good. And then you post. So you can always post on uh, Dribble. Dribble is a good place to have your portfolio. Uh, you can always post on bare hands. But Dribble is an invite-only platform, okay? So uh, in, most, in most cases, someone would have to invite you into Dribble, you know, before you can uh, come in. You know? Whereas Behance is, you just create your account and you're in. So you, you can you can go with, with, you don't really feel with either of the two, okay? You know? Dribble, eventually someone will have an invite and would invite you, okay? You know, I had an invite somewhere a while back and I, I've used it, you know, but yeah, people who are on the platform who have invites and don't use it gets taken away from them after a particular period of time. So, so I've not gotten an invite in almost six months, you know, so I, so I don't have one to give out, sadly, you know. But if I have one, I'll always let you guys know. So Dribble is a good place to start. Beyonce is a good place to start. So just, this is a very, very great way to start off by building your portfolio, because you, you you have 100 designs you can show. <laughs> so so it's, 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 it's lovely. So bare hands, okay, bare hands, this is bare hands. It's also a very good place to, but uh, Ado has what they call their creative challenges for uh, XD and for, I think for XD and for uh, Photoshop. So you can always pick one of them, but since you are doing UI, you can always pick their, daily creative challenge okay. this adobe daily creative challenge so uh, i think it has been going on for almost a year plus now so these are all the challenges they've done and they are guide videos to those challenges so it's it's pretty much straightforward you can start from the very bottom or you can start from the very top so it's uh, it's generally up to you okay so, okay so uh, I think, I think, I think we are, uh, okay. So, well, the last part now, then we'll, we'll take normal chat questions and then we can talk extensively. But uh, the fourth thing is growing on the job. So there's pretty much only one straightforward answer for that. And, and that is to just keep designing and keep improving. So, uh, Fine, you've learned stuff here, you know, it doesn't end here because, you know, things are constantly changing, trends are coming up, things are, you know, constantly improving, okay? So it's more about you while you walk in, you know, keep reading blogs, keep, you keep experimenting, okay? You know, it's more or less the, the only way to move forward with uh, UI UX, okay? I, I, I don't really have much to say about you know, growing up the job because once you know the basics, uh, you are good to go. Uh, I think I just started designing for an organization just last year. I was majorly doing freelance you know, a lot. And in most cases, 
what the client just wants from you is for, from you to, for you to deliver. You know, if you hone your skills, if you harness your skills, that's why I said the challenge is nice because the challenge more or less pushes you to try out everything you've learned and you know you can put that into your work. You know, so you've already learned how to use colors, you've already learned how to use typography and the like. You know, the challenge picks portions of different things and says, oh, today you are designing maybe a chat screen, tomorrow you are designing maybe a log. You know, at the end of the day or at the end of the entire uh, process of the 100 day challenge, you are more or less equipped to be able to design both mobile and uh, desktop applications, you know, because you already have portions that you've designed and you know how to design those portions. So when a project comes to you at the end of the day, it's more about you understanding those different portions of the project. So they may tell you, uh, we want a chat screen, for example. You've already done that. They may tell you we want one screen for a uh, live video. You've already done that. You know, they tell you, you know, so it's more about how you now play around your colors, your aesthetics and every other thing. Okay. Now, making their own brand person personalized to them you know within that uh, application so that's more 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 about growing you know, on the job okay so guys uh, i think that that, that 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 covers everything we had to talk on so uh, if anyone has questions you know chats you want to chat with isaac or any other statement? I think the floor is open now, so you know, we can we can we can do that now. Okay, so I think I can stop sharing my screen now, so we can more or less move forward. So, any questions? You know? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can see all these tools. They are plentiful. Okay, how do we get? Okay. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, Bumi said, can GitHub be used for portfolio creation? Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, GitHub is the portfolio majorly for developers. So, yeah, it can be used for portfolio creation, but for developers. Yeah, definitely. Definitely can be used. So, uh, okay, Sean. Well, Definitely, you can put your question on the group chats, definitely. So you can, you can definitely put them on the group chats, so. Okay, so do we have any other questions? This is a chat session, guys, guys. How do we get a dribble, get an, an invite to dribble? Okay. Um, How do we get uh, how do we get an invite on Dribble? Okay, so uh, the way Dribble works is when someone invite you can definitely come in, you can view works, you can sign up, you can do all of those stuff, definitely. But when you want people to see your work, you need to be invited to the platform. So in most cases, people who have invites uh, would publicize that they have invites. So you can more or less look at their, you can search Dribble invite and any of the latest posts you see with a Dribble invite, you can more or less uh, send a message to the person and say, oh, you are up for invitation and then the person will invite you in. Uh, I, posted, I posted my first talk on Dribble, I was, I think, a while back, I can't remember, what, I can't remember when I posted. But I was a friend that brought me in. I was complaining to him that I posted on Behance and that Behance was, you know, uh, already received some views, but Dribble, there wasn't any show. So he was like, ah, no, 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 that you have to be invited. So fortunately for me, as we were talking, he had an invite, so he invited me into Dribble. So that was how I got into Dribble. You, know, but, uh, you can always keep searching on Dribble for posts that have invites attached to them. That way you can you know, message the person or you know, tell the person who, that you are up for an invitation and then the person will invite you in. Okay. So uh, what's the demand of UI UX in Nigeria? Okay. Hmm. UI, UI, UI UX demand in Nigeria 
I would say it's, it's still relatively moderate. I won't say it is high high, you know. I won't say it is high high, but uh, you you would definitely get something. You know, we have a lot of. I would say we're having a lot of <laughs> a lot of UI designers now in Nigeria. Okay, definitely a lot. You know, but the 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 workspace is uh, the field itself is in high demand worldwide. So, you know, there's that potential that you know, based on how good you are, okay, you will definitely get job. Even guys who who are just entry levels are still getting jobs. Okay, so. I would say the idea behind it is low. That is in you know, uh, clients or employers understanding what the role actually entails. I would say their knowledge about that is very, very low. Whereas the demand for the field is high because now a lot of people are aware of the need to see what the product, a simulation of what the product would be like, okay, before they actually invest time and effort into paying for the development. You know? So based on, I'll say my few months of working with an actual company, okay, the demand is, is high. Definitely, I won't say it is high, high, okay. It's moderate for now, it's still moderate for now, but I see it going up, going up more, going up, you know, eventually. It will definitely go up, definitely to go up, because a lot of people now demand for mock-ups. People now demand for, okay, show me what it will look like. I don't want to see the code. Show me what it will look like, you know? So to put, to put that all together, they, they more or less feel they need to employ you or you guys. But most of the time, they, all they tell you is we're looking for the UI guy, you know? They don't, <laughs> they don't necessarily go through the design thinking process a lot, so, you know, which, which is sad. So, uh, uh, Sean says, how can we go into UI and UX advanced training? Okay, so uh, generally I wouldn't say there's more, more or less an advanced training. Everything is based more around what we've done basically because everything is revolves around that. Every other thing are just maybe layers of abstractions. So it's more like uh, uh, where people now create uh, unique kinds of uh, tools around their workflow. So, okay, okay. So you would, you know, more or less see uh, Google maybe have a custom MyRobot or something and, and say this is our workflow. You know, the basics of everything is what we've talked about. Every other thing is more or less a layer of abstraction. But if you are talking about getting more training, you know, the interaction design foundation is there. Uh, there is there is one there was there was one I did where early last this year, I think was it this year or last year, I can't remember. UXDMC. UXDMC is a very, very nice, very, very nice course. Uh, I don't know how much it is now, but I think it was around three hundred or four hundred dollars when I did it, but it's a very very nice uh, course. It's it was done by a very top UI uh, company, Filament. Yeah, yeah, Filament. They have already done a lot of top notch projects, and they decided to do an in house training. And the likes. it was it's up. And let, let me see. Let, let me share my screen and see if if I can pull 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 up the. Pull, of your website. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, but it, it was it was a very very lovely course. Uh, okay. I still I still think I still have access to it. Okay. So uh, and I think they even offer you maybe a certification or something of that nature. Okay. So they are saying for so the offer will be ending on April. 50%. So, I don't know how much it is now, but uh, you know, they are offering 50% off, maybe it's because of the COVID thing. Okay. Okay. So you can get the full module for $500. Okay. So, and you save Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a really, really nice, uh, it was a really, really nice 
course, you know. And they, they cover everything from uh, still what we've done to uh, working with developers and the like, you know. And they give you a certificate. I've not, I've not bought my certificate. So <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll get that. So, uh, uh, <laughs> we said we have not finished. We are, we are, we are finished. We are already, I, I would say you're already at intermediate level, funny enough. Okay, because the, the way every No, I was, sorry, I was actually responding to Sean. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Was saying, <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was, I'm telling that we've not even. Yeah, we're not no. even done using this beginner level, you know, oh, like yeah, practical yeah. light. Don't tell me you're in beginner level. You have less beginner level. You <laughs> <laughs> are already in the intermediate level now. Okay. okay. Yeah, they <laughs> have everything you need. But all yeah. the other guys do is uh, they, they employ tools, okay, that now makes their process faster, you know. So it's... All, all you'll be doing between now and getting to the advanced level is finding ways to make your workflow better, okay? So it's just like why I introduced you to some of these new tools today, okay? So those guys already have many of this stuff that, you know, ensures that their work is fast, okay? That's, that's the only thing. They already understand the process. You guys already understand the process, okay? Once, once you know how the entire UX process works, you... And the only, the only way you get better is by doing it regularly, okay? So the more practice you have, the better you get at it, you know? That, you know that, that's majorly it, so. A lot of people have started going into it already. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people are already into it. So you think you can survive as a designer without coding? Because I see most job decisions asking for coding skills. Okay, so Charles, uh, okay. Uh, you can, okay, I would say you can survive, okay, but I will advise you, you don't stay there. Why I would say you should have a background with design is because, uh, uh, why I would say you can try coding as well is because uh, now, even now when I'm doing some coding, I'm not realizing that, okay, some of my designs are very outrageous, okay, <laughs> because, uh, I make some things and developers come to me and they're like, ah, uh -uh, is it cool? well, are you trying to kill me? And I'm like, ah, it's just, you know, and they tell me now nah, that they can't implement that into uh, code, you know. So having the knowledge of coding gives you that edge. Okay, so it depends on, I would say it depends on how far you're willing to take it. I know some guys who just understand the bare minimum of code and they say they don't want to go forward, that they, they enjoy the designing part. So, but because they understand how code works, they know how to design for that code they're getting. So that's where I am with my intentions for coding. So I'm like, oh, let me understand how code works so that way I can design better for users as well as developers, okay? So that's one way of looking at it. Then when you are now fully, you know, invested or you feel, yes, you know, you can do the coding, by all means, go ahead, okay? No, by all means, go, go ahead. It's, uh, it's, it's a very, very nice thing to have, okay? Although we have some new tools, you know, that are making some design, uh, designers no longer you know, invest in code. I think Webflow is one of them. So you can easily just do a drag and drop and create a website with what you want. It, it would be absolutely amazing. Okay. So it's, <laughs> you know, there are tools like that already. And web, I think Webflow even allows you to copy out the code. Okay. So <laughs> there are tools like that, you know, but for the real development process, okay, that's when people are actually developing the actual applications you are coding, you are designing and the likes. It would be nice to understand how code works, okay? So th that, that way, you know, uh, the designs are meaningful, not just to users, but also to whoever would code it, you know, to make their life much better. I, mean, I was talking with a developer yesterday that I was working with that. I, I showed him a design and he was like, please, Isaac, don't, don't pass it over. That I should change some things there. 
because they can't implement it. Okay, you know. So I think also having good communication with those guys would be nice. So before before you push anything forward or show that oh yes you designed something amazing, you know, push it to developers first. It will make their life easier. So they can look at it and tell you what is possible and what is not possible. But by all means, definitely pick up coding if you can. Okay, I'm 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 ready. I'm ready on it. So <laughs> pick up coding if you can. Product designers are you not UI designers? No, no, Bumi. Um, product designers are not UI designers. Okay, they are. They are partly UI designers, yes, but they are not fully only just UI designers. Uh, how would I put this now? All of them are just names that companies give you, Jerry. <laughs> All of them are just names companies give you. The company will call you and tell you, okay, but then uh, we are looking for a product designer, blah, 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 blah. And then your job is only UI design. Okay. But in the actual sense of things, a product designer is someone who understands the entire UX process and what the product itself is. So you are more or less after the success of the product. So you are, you are iterating the product based on both the past, the present, and the future. Okay. So a product designer would uh, be more in tune with how the product should behave now and how the product should behave in the future. So you are not just dwelling on the now. And you are also looking at how successful that product is. So some kind of project management comes into being a product designer. You know, but uh, but most companies just give you the title of product designer just to make you look cool and they like you. Know, it's, just, it's just just that. I see some people profile that read UI engineer. What does that mean? The engineer at the back mm -hmm. of it is coffee. <laughs> okay. Ah, like I said, it's just names. Uh, it's. <laughs> It's just names. Even abroad, it is just names. Okay? You know, so they, they come up with unique roles and they, they feel okay, they should attach a name that you know works for that role. So a UX and a UI engineer may be someone who uh, who is who is majorly bothered about uh, I would say the mechanics of an application. Okay, so someone who will now be in charge of uh, uh, how how the, the product will relate with APIs, for example. So uh, there was a time I was talking with some guys, and you know, they they were asking me stuff on uh, what's your UI engineering process, and I was like, what what do you mean by my engineering process? Because that was the first time I was hearing the word from them. It was actually an interview, and I was like, okay, uh, what is my what, what what do you mean by the UI engineering process? Because this is the first time I'm hearing about that. You know, and they were not quite able to explain the whole thing to me. You know, so which which goes on to solidify my point that uh, uh, you know many of them are just you know rules okay, that they just or titles they just give to you. You know, and you know, but you. I think more, more, more of it revolves around, because I know some guys who claim to be UI engineers and most of, most of what they do revolves around interaction and uh, uh, maybe you know, how the products relate with an API. So for example, a graph API, okay, how the graph would be represented and the like. So, you know, because ideally in a standard working environment, uh, a standard working environment, you are not the only one doing the job. Okay, it's more or less like a team effort, you know. So that's why you more or less have those different types of roles. So, a, a quick Google search can still help you, right? So you know, because many of the roles can be confusing, but everything still overlaps with each other, you know, at the end of the day. So so most times it's just titles. <laughs> most times it's just titles they give to you. So, uh, do we have any other questions, guys? Do we have any other questions? This is really good. You don't want that. So, guys, so does that mean we, we, we are cool? You know, we, and we, we, 
we can still we can still talk about any anything you have you know, later on you can always send your questions to the to the group chat at any point in time so you're just playing with my light off and on off and on <laughs> so okay so guys so that uh, more or less brings us to the end of our, our training our ui ux training uh, i've seen some some work I, I saw abib's work yesterday it was wonderful although don't mind abib i think abib is already a pro it's just abib is just deceiving us don't mind him i, I think he's already a pro so but uh, I'm still expecting to see some of you guys. But it's true. Bumi and Sean, uh, you guys, I've not seen your work. You guys should post your work. So. Well, what's going on? Uh, what's going on? I, I, need, I need to see you guys' work. <laughs> uh, my, my class captain, uh, where's your work? <laughs> so... Uh, but definitely you, you guys can always the group will always be there the okay okay great great wow that's nice i'm sure you're buying a macbook now yeah i'm sure you're buying a macbook so <laughs> so uh, uh, you guys the, the group chat will always be there you know so any questions you have are always there you know, anything you are working on anything at, at, at all uh you know you can always post and get feedback ginger other people okay because uh, some people might see them like oh i'm slacking too and then they can you know also get on theirs as well okay so guys this brings us to the end of uh, our training yeah. so based on the responses from your assignments we've agreed on an xd class so uh, Based on how many people respond, we'll, we'll do an XD class. So we can also have that at the back of Because some people just want to know how many tools you are proficient in as well. So <laughs> you may ask you things like, do you use Sketch? Do you use XD? Do you use Figma? You know, blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> so that, that, that should also be something we can look at as well. Okay, okay guys. So uh, have a lovely weekend. Head. Okay. Okay, guys.